Hi and welcome. I'm Claire Evans and in this short video I'm just going to show you how you might use a lifetime mortgage to show your client the impact of making a gift with a lifetime mortgage rather than using the client's own liquid assets. So let's have a look at this case that we've got in front of us. So we've got Mary. Mary is widowed, okay? So when we look at the people in the plan, we've just got Mary here, she's 77. She's got a single goal in the plan at the moment, which is her retirement income that she needs, okay? So that's um, 36,000 pounds per annum. So Mary's got some investments. She's got 300K in a stocks and shares ISA. She's got 70,000 in shares. And she's also got some money in her cash accounts as well. She has her property, which is worth 900,000. She likes where she lives. She has no intention of moving home, but she's up for considering using the equity in her property rather than her liquid assets, should she need them later in the plan. She has inherited her husband's final salary income, which is 12,000 per annum. She also has her state pension of 9,000 per annum, and she's got some drawdown funds as well, which are from her late husband. In the expenses, I've put here this legacy gift to her daughter. So Mary would like to pay off her daughter's mortgage for her, and that's a gift of 300,000 that she is looking to make next year in the plan. So in the carryover assumptions, what you would need to do is you would need to show as a widow how much of her husband's nil rate ban she's carrying forward and how much of the resident's nil rate ban she's carrying forward. Also, you would need to put if she's made any previous pets in the last seven years. That will update the taxes to reflect anything that's happened previously in the plan. In the timeline, literally all we've got here is the gift to the daughter. And let's see how that looks. So from a cash flow perspective, Mary could, if she wanted to take the money for the gift from her ISAs, wouldn't cause any immediate tax charge, of course, for doing so. We can see that we would need to then draw on her pensions later on in the plan, and they would be outside of her estate um, if they were left alone. Okay, so we've got her state pension, her final salary pension, and then her investments. In the liquidation order, I've just drawn on the pensions last. If we take a look at her assets, we can see here that in the, in the, in the plan, we've got significant wealth still left at the end of the plan, 1.7 million, but a good chart would be the net worth chart to look at. Okay, so the net worth for Mary at the end of the plan, assuming mortality of age 90 is 1.7 million. Where you see the impact of any inheritance tax in a plan is in the legacy overview. So here we can see the simple legacy view, which is showing us a single view of Mary's legacy. Okay, so how much is her total taxable estate? What is the inheritance tax due? And what distributions like the pension do we have outside of the estate? If you want to see this in more detail, you click on the detail button and then here you can see the breakdown. You'll also see the husband's nil rate band that we're carrying forward and the complete tax calculation there for you. You've also in the insights got the inheritance tax simulation. So you can run this and you can show Mary what potential inheritance tax there is all the way through in the plan. So that's the base case scenario. What we're going to look at is a what if, okay? And in this what if, we're going to be using equity release or lifetime mortgage, whatever you want to call it, for the gift. Okay. So how do we plan for this new version of the plan? Okay, so we start off in our debt screen and we want to choose the line of credit. We're going to call this life, lifetime mortgage. Now the credit limit is either fixed, which it will be for us, or you could show a percentage of equity. Okay, so percentage of equity, 
would mean that you could just say, okay, the client has 50% you know, of the equity in the property available. And then you could use this as almost as a drawdown facility and the software will allow you to either schedule withdrawals or fill up the bucket as needed to help meet the need. But in Mary's case, we're gonna fix that at 300,000. We haven't had any other borrowings. So that balance at the moment, the current balance is zero and the interest rate on the loan is 2%. Because I've got inline help switched on, which is done over here in your preferences, it means that any of these underlying fields, if I'm unsure what that refers to, I can click on that and I can see here in the inline help what that, what that field is looking for. You've got two options, repayment or interest only. If you want to show the a payments amounts rolling up, then you would choose repayment, but you would put a zero payment amount in. One thing to note is to change the withdrawal limit. So the withdrawal limit is set to do not allow. So we change that to scheduled only. And then we go to our planned withdrawals and we add our planned withdrawal. So we save what we've done. And if I put here, gift to daughter, 300,000. And the timing of that is here. Set a start event, click done. Now, if I go to the charts, what I can see is this green color here is our line of credit, our reversionary or lifetime mortgage coming into the plan. So actually what we can do is we can compare the two. So from a cash flow, it's pretty identical. We're meeting the need either way. And where this works particularly well, of course, is where the client doesn't have sufficient funds to make the lump sum from their liquid assets. I appreciate that this would be, you know, difficult for compliance reasons if, if they did have the funds available, but you know, this is just an example. So take it in, in the vein it's, it's meant. Okay. So the cash flow is one chart. Net worth is interesting because of course the net worth where we've got the, um, gift will be slightly lower because we do of course now have a debt on the estate. Okay and the debt is rolling up each year. We're not servicing that debt. And we can see here the value of that debt at the end of the plan. But where you really might want to also direct the client is to the legacy page. Now, if I go to a comparison, I can compare to the base plan. Now the numbers we're talking about here are fairly small okay so the tax saving is marginal okay a couple of thousand pounds but what we can show the client is the estate transfer of course is 1.229 million less a tax in this plan and one two three five in this plan so although we're kind of maybe in a net position four thousand pounds lower in in the um in the base plan the other thing to bear, sorry, in the equity release plan, the key thing that we want to look at also is that this pension would remain untouched. So here we've got this distribution outside of the estate, which is almost 600,000, which is the value of the pension, the drawdown pension from her husband, that if she didn't touch that through the plan, it would be worth significantly more than in the base plan where we're needing to draw on that for income. So actually the client is around 120,000 pounds better off in this plan. So it's not always the in inheritance tax that we're focusing on. Sometimes it is the distribution, the total distribution to the beneficiaries that is a helpful view in this comparison. Of course, if you were having a greater impact on the inheritance tax, then you could go to the potential IHT. So you could actually compare the two inheritance tax positions on each plan. And again, that's quite a nice view if there's a big saving, okay? But in this plan, it's quite, quite marginal. Also, something you might want to do when you follow up is to use the estate analysis report. So this is fairly new report. And um, what we can do is we can start with the base plan, state analysis. 
and then go to ER for the gift. And then this report is actually customizable. So what you'll notice is that you've got the option to look at the planned legacy, which is legacy at the end of the plan, or the client dying immediately. And then you've got the details page or not. Okay, so I'm going to take off the detail because I just literally want that flowchart graphic. Okay, and then if I generate that report, here we've got the estate analysis as we've just seen it on the screen, but something for you to add to your letter, suitability report, or strategy report that you're sending to your client. And you know, it's a nice flow chart, easy for the client to understand and reflective of hopefully what you've shown during your meeting with Mary and potentially Mary's daughter as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit of food for thought. As with anything, come back to us on support at planwithvoyant.com if you've got any questions or queries and we'll be happy to talk to you about individual cases. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.